Hey guys, what's good? It's me, Jay Lee. You're watching Jay Lee Sees, and today Jay Lee finally gets round to seeing The Walking Dead. For those of you that are seeing me the first time, let me tell you what I do around here. I like to sit back, react, and review to the biggest TV shows and movies that took the world by storm, yet somehow I managed to miss. And The Walking Dead is no exception. So, after the massive undertaking of reacting and reviewing to every single episode of Game of Thrones, there was a hole in my life that I asked my viewers to fill with another epic TV show. And out of all of the vast and various recommendations, The Walking Dead won by a clear majority. All I really know about The Walking Dead is that it's about zombies. And considering I've just watched Game of Thrones, which kind of had zombies in it, I feel like I'm well prepared for a show like this. But let's read the official synopsis and see if I'm into it. The Walking Dead is a series that features a large ensemble cast as survivors of a zombie apocalypse trying to stay alive under near constant threat of attack from zombies known as walkers. With the collapse of modern civilization, these survivors must confront other human survivors who have formed groups and communities with their own sets of laws and morals, sometimes leading to open, hostile conflict between them. And also while reading the synopsis, I've just seen the number of episodes and it's on 163. Girl, I know I said I wanted another big project, but this is a commitment. So what I usually like to do with my TV shows is I like to give them a three episode grace period to see if it catches me. But I think The Walking Dead season one only has six episodes. So I'm going to do the whole six episodes and then see how I feel. And just a quick alert before we get into it, my Patreon is up and running. So if you are a fan of The Walking Dead and you appreciate my reaction videos, then feel free to head over to Patreon where you can watch this episode and the whole of season one up and running right now. Unedited, uncut and uncensored. That's right, the full season one, six full episodes up and running and ready for you to enjoy. So don't say I don't spoil ya. So with all of that being said, let's get straight into it, shall we? The very first baby steps on an epic journey. Before we start, I just want to let everybody know that the footage that we're about to see does not belong to me. It belongs to AMC. But without further ado, the very first episode of The Walking Dead. <laughs> Lights, camera, pew, action. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the apocalypse has already happened or there's been some serious nasty accident that you took maybe one or two minutes too long to get to, sir. Oh, I'm going to have so many questions along the way. I'm already, my head's already filled up with questions, but I'll just let it play out before I make myself look like a dickhead. So, the questions that are going on in my mind right now, I just said I weren't going to voice my questions out loud, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, how long ago did this zombie, zombie apocalypse start? Um, how does a zombie apocalypse begin anyway? How is he not a zombie in this zombie apocalypse? Ah, uh, that's pretty much basically it for now, actually. Little girl? Oh, I don't think she is a little girl. I think she's going to be a little monster. Ah, oh, she weren't a little girl. She was a little monster. I don't think she's okay. He doesn't look overly shocked, so I'm sure this isn't his first zombie he's encountered. Oh, is she not free? Okay, it's going to be a graphic kind of show. Got ya. In the first five minutes, we've already shot down some little girl. Literally nothing has happened yet, and I'm already vibrating and buzzing with excitement. I do hope it captures me, because there is so many episodes of this shit. Subject from two male Caucasians. Be advised, they have five ton police officers. One Linden County officer is wounded. <laughs> So 
So is this before the apocalypse strikes? Do apocalypse strike? Because I see more alive people than I did in the beginning bit, but I don't see anyone else really. Seven in cold 100, highway 18. Oh, here's more people. Sounds like they chasing those idiots up and down every back road we got. Maybe we'll get on one of them video shows, you know, like world's craziest police chases. What do you think? What I think, Leon, is you need to stay focused. Would be kind of cool get on one of them shows. Probably rather that show than this show. I feel in this though, in this kind of show, a zombie's gonna eat your face. <laughs> with as much caution as you is. I think they are going to be highly incapacitated if they is alive still. Unless they're already a zombie. Oh wait, no! Oh yeah, shit! Guns up! I underestimated this stranger's resilience. My main man got shot. Well, I'm assuming it's going to be alright, because in a minute, he's part of the zombie apocalypse. And I feel like this is before the zombie apocalypse has happened. Son of a bitch shot me. You believe that? I'm going to catch you in your vest. Yeah. Oh, there's another one. Don't tell Lori that happened. Ever. You understand? <gasps> Ooh! I saw flesh come out of him. There's no vest on that point. Oh, you're worth gonna find about this one for sure. I'm sorry, man. I know it's just ain't crap every time I come in here. <sighs> oh my god, this makes me feel like I'm on drugs. Shane. Shane, you in the job. I've got to pick up these names quick, you know. I've got to be introduced to a flurry of characters. I don't even know his name yet. <laughs> oh, those flowers have died. I've only just picked up on that. So your mate Shane ain't been there for a while. Even a clock's battery stopped to run out. How long's he fucking been there for? Has a zombie apocalypse happened around him? And that's why he's alive in apocalypse. That raises more questions than answers, though. I'm not going to lie. Also, if this is your first time watching me, guys, um, heads up, I'm thick as shit, so bear with me. Oh, no, this apocalypse has definitely happened. Either that or there was a mad party up in that hospital last night. So it looks like the party happened around him while he slept. But why was he not invited? Oh, uh, mate, if I was you, I'll just go back to your hospital bed. Oh, uh, go back to your hospital bed, pump yourself with drugs and go back to sleep. And hopefully you wake up in a whole different parallel universe than the one you've just woken up in, okay? See, some people adjust and adapt really fast to whatever life throws at them. But this shit, hell no. Literally, get back in my bed, under the covers and just go to sleep. I ain't prepared for this kind of shit. Ooh, back the fuck up. I promise you that it's not going to be anything good. Oh, God, I keep expecting some kind of jump scare. I don't even know if this is that kind of show. But I've got such a nervous disposition. So it's like everyone bar him dead. But obviously in the synopsis it said that there's other like human survivors and like little communities. So I know he's not like the only person in the whole entire motherfucking world still alive. But maybe in this town he is. Which also makes me think how far 
widespread is this apocalypse? Like, is it only in this town, in the next neighbouring town, is a flourishing community full of living bitches? <gasps> oh my god, for one little tiny second I forgot that this is a, a zombie thing and that means um, they move. What would you do in a situation like that? I'd ride a few spaces back, but I would have to stay and watch for a moment and see what this bitch wanted to try to do. I mean, I would not let her touch me, but I'm well intrigued. I am. It's like a museum. Carl! Carl! I don't know where his family is, but his house looks in good tap. Definitely compared to the hospital and the bloody living conditions outside in the real world. So hopefully... That's a good sign. Oh, babes, could you imagine waking up in a world and everyone else is dead? <gasps> oh my God, what the fuck away? That was like the smoothest jump scare I've ever experienced. Daddy, daddy! Oh, what is going on? He say something? Humans! You thought I heard him say something. You got me, Carl. Son, you know they don't talk. What? What kind of wound? You answer me, damn you. Ironically, it's a gunshot wound. You tell me, or I will kill you. Well, maybe that's for the best. That's what I'll be like. If I woke up in those circumstances, I'll be like, mate, go for it. My head is scrambled. I cannot even cope. Just put me out of my misery, please. But then I'll be worried, because last time I fucking got shot, I woke up and the world had died. Could you imagine if I wake up again? Did you get bit? No. Bit. This bit. much we know for sure. Maybe scratch. Anything like that. I'll be like, excuse me, sir. I got shot and ended up in a coma. I don't know how long I was in a coma for, but I've woken up to the world like this. So let me ask the questions and you answer them. You shot that man today. Man? We're no man. What the hell was that out your mouth just now? It wasn't a man. You shot him in the street out front. A man. It weren't a man. It was a zombie. You've seen enough of these zombies by now to know that these people are already dead. But then again, it's not something you just wrap your brain around it and go, oh, okay, that makes sense. Dead people are now reanimated and want to eat my face off. Hey, mister, you even know what's going on? Oh, no, tell me everything. One thing I do know, don't you get bit. I saw your bandage, and that's what we were afraid of. If you get bit, you get infected. Bites kill you. Oh, oh, no. You come back. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. You get bit by a zombie, you turn into a zombie. Got ya. But what created the zombies in the first place? This is like bloody... What came first, the chicken or the egg? What came first, the zombie or the bite? We got a little bed going. My boy said you were a bank robber. <sighs> yeah, that's me. Deadly as Dillinger, kapow. <laughs> Sheriff's deputy. Uh -huh. Oh, I don't think they like the popo very much. So I'm assuming there's no electric in this um, apocalyptic world. She's here. Don't look. Get away from the windows. Oh my god, is that his mother? I don't know why I'm assuming that, but I am. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I'm assuming there is no cure. No one is working on a cure because all the scientists are now zombies. She died in the other room on that bed in there. There's nothing I could do about it. That fever, man. I should have put it down, man. I should have put it down. I know that, but... How do you put a zombie down now? 
I don't want to compare it to any other show, but in Game of Thrones, they set those bitches on fire and that's how they killed them. Is that the same kind of mechanism in this show? I mean, props to your mama. They are pretty civilised zombies, isn't they? Usually they smash and crash through everything. But this one, she just tried to turn the handle a few times, couldn't get in, so she fucked off. They did. Except for something in the brain. That's why it's gotta be the head. Oh. Okay. Hi, sir. Can you be our test subject to make sure we know how to fucking murder you? Thanks. The refugee center. Huge one, they said, before the broadcast stopped. Military protection, food, shelter. They told people to go there. Said it'd be safest. Plus they got that disease place. Center for Disease Control. Said they were working out how to solve this thing. Oh, okay. People are taking the necessary steps to try combat this year. Okay, get in ya, get in ya. So that's where we need to go to now to try and find his wife and son. And help and resources. A lot of it's gone missing. Daddy, can I learn to shoot? I'm old enough. Oh, yeah. Being a police officer, he's got access to weapons galore. Listen, one thing. They may not seem like much one at a time, but in a group all riled up and hungry, man, you watch your ass. Mm. You too. You good man, Rick. Rick? Oh! Okay, I finally got this man's name. Hey, bitch. You know they're here, the shot. Let's not be here when they show up. Let's go, son. Come on. Oh, I don't like the idea of you guys parting ways. <laughs> uh... Ma Rick, he looked like he kind of enjoyed that a little bit. It's like, oh, God, I've been wanting to do this for years. If I was roaming freely out in the open like that, um, even if there is no one around at the moment, I would just be covered in bubble wrap just in case. Like from head to toe. No, see, you need a silencer on your gun. Or else you're just going to get yourself into a heap of trouble. I'm on episode one and I know this. Come on, baby. Oh, is he trying to summon his wife? And that's why he doesn't mind making the noises. <gasps> there she is. Oh! Oh! You mean? Oh, I couldn't do it. That used to be his wife. Anybody out there? Anybody hears me? Please respond. Hello? Can you hear my voice? Hello? Hello? Oh, they can! Oh my god, a whole bunch of live people. Hello? He couldn't hear me. I couldn't warn him. I Try to raise him again. Come on, son, you know best how to work this thing. Oh my god, it scared the life out of me. Hello, hello. Oh, my days! I forgot his name already! Because I thought he died, so I thought I don't need to remember your name anymore. This is all that's Shane Walsh Wicks... broadcasting a person unknown. Shane, Please respond. That's Rick's partner. How the hell did he survive? I'm so confused. Because Rick, he was in a coma, so it all kind of happened around him. He wasn't in a coma as far as I'm aware. And yet he made it. <laughs> oh, but 
days. Stop, pause, rewind. Um, your wife is alive, mate, and so is your kid. So is your partner. But they've been smooching, okay? They got over you. Quick time. Oh, I hope you find them. That will put the bloody cat amongst the pigeons, won't it? Ugh, dude, your wife is alive. And she is like moved on with some other dude and not just any other dude but your work colleague <laughs> what? what um okay babes it's time to move on ain't no one gonna help you in that household how long do you have to go through all of this, do you think, before it goes from everything that you see is traumatic to everything is just normalised and you just get on with it? For me, I don't think I'll even survive the adjustment period. To be fair, I feel like I'll be one of the first to die if the apocalypse was to come, for sure. Okay, so there's still livestock. Are they demonic or are they good enough to eat? What are you going to do with an ulse? Oh, obviously, ride it. Bloody hell, Jay. Um, where are all the cars on this side of the road? I have so many questions, but it does answer my question that it weren't just his town and neighbourhood that were fucked up. Seems like everywhere is. And these zombies just don't seem to roam freely in the daytime like they do the night time. Well, I did think the clip of the clock of the horse's hooves was going to raise some attention, you know. But I suppose I was right. The thing though with these zombies, from what I can see so far, is they are in no rush to do anything. They are on cruise control. So they're quite easy to outmaneuver. I mean, you could do it without even really breaking a sweat. So maybe I might survive at least a little while. No zombies knowing how to fly an helicopter, they can't even talk. So if there's a helicopter, there's humans and ooh, go go down another street, babes. There is a carnival down here. But yeah, if there's a helicopter, there's people and there's fuel. These are the two things you need. Why would they all gather down that one street? What is down that one street? Oh, they're everywhere! Oh, I don't duck and crawl under these bitches. Fuck the horse, that horse is about to be a zombie now. Oh, we could really use the assistance of this fucking helicopter right about now. Mate, you've like cornered yourself here. Glory, Carl. I'm sorry. <gasps> oh, I thought he was going to kill himself for a second. I wouldn't even really have an issue with him doing it either. Not that I want you to die, but what is the fucking point of living, right? And what you don't even realise is yet that, yeah, your wife and kid are still alive, but she has well and truly moved on. You need to shoot him quick time. Why are you so shocked? Oh yeah, I bet that fucked up your eardrums. Oh, don't pass out in no tank. Ain't no one gonna find you in a tank. If anyone from the helicopter is looking for you or any normal civilised human beings that aren't gonna eat your face off. So can the zombies detect um, human beings from other zombies? 
Because can't he just climb out of the tank and just walk really slowly and dribble a little bit and just pretend, like, listen, I'm one of you, yeah? So don't attack me. Let's go find people to attack. And then when they're distracted, you can just, like, skedaddle out of there. Hey, you. Dumbass. Hello? Yeah, you want to take? Yes! Cozy in there? Is that you, Jesus? Oh, see you later, horse. I hardly knew ya. I'm really squeamish and get queasy well easily. And this seems like it's going to be quite a gory, graphic, bloody mess. And I'm just going to have to fucking suck it up, buttercup, and get used to it. Okay, guys, that is the first episode of The Walking Dead. Done and dusted. Let's talk about it. Okay, I'm going to give a quick recap on what I saw to make sure that I, um computed everything that I did see um, and then we will give a little review about what we saw as well. So this show starts off with um, a man called Rick and a man called Shane and these two they are police officers and they are partners in crime or partners against crime whatever. Um, they go about their day they are a part of a wild police chase which ends in a shootout, and unfortunately, my man Rick gets shot up, and then he ends up in hospital and in a coma. Plot twist of the fucking century. Soon as he wakes up from the coma, ain't no one there to greet him. His family ain't there to love up on him, because the world's turned to shit, and everyone's now a zombie. So, my man Rick, he is trying to whack his brain about the old situation, and in doing so, he meets these um, two fellow people that happen to be alive as well. So he takes refuge with these bitches because they are squatting for a while because there was the wife and the mother who was there. But then she died and now she's out roaming the streets like a feral little beast. And they do not want to leave the location because they just can't detach from her spirit, basically. So Rick's like, give me kind of some information that you can give me about what the fuck is going on. And in return, I'm going to give you some weapons so you can defend yourself. Um, so the man, I don't even know his name, the man with the kid, he's like, a lot of people are taking refuge in Atlanta because there's like a camp full of survivors um, who are trying to figure out what the fuck to do in all this shit and this mayhem and this carnage. So Rick's like, I'm going to go to Atlanta because I'm hoping to find my wife and my child. So, him and the father and son team, they split up. Rick goes, he runs out of fuel in his police car, so he adopts a horse. And he makes his way, I'm assuming he's made his way to Atlanta. But unfortunately, shit is going down in Atlanta. There was some street party full of the dead bitches. And the horses, click, clop, clop, alerted them to Rick. So he got cornered and had to take refuge inside of a tank. And this one he thought all was lost because what the fuck are you going to do now? A. I can't communicate with anyone. B. I'm surrounded by dead people. And C. This is a lot to digest considering I've literally just woke up from a coma. But just when he thought all hope was lost, there was a voice that came from the radio. And not just any motherfucking voice. I mean, I don't know who it belonged to. But they knew that Rick was in a tank. So someone that has eyes on, on him. And the only person I can assume is whoever's in the motherfucking helicopter. I don't know, but that was what happened in the first episode. I think this was a very strong start. Obviously, I have more questions than answers. That's natural, especially in the very first episode. We were briefly introduced to a few characters, such as Rick. I seem to... I like him so much. Um, so far, so good. I mean, he hasn't really done anything apart from being in complete shock, which is natural. Um, but... So far, so good. This Shane, um, didn't really mind this Shane. And then I thought he had died, so I didn't even care about him. But then it turns out he's not dead. So I was like, woo, you're alive. And then he starts kissing up on this woman. So I'm like, oh, not only are you alive, you are getting some too. Plot twist again. The woman is Rick's wife. So if Rick comes back on the scene, that's going to be quite awkward. Because they're like, oh my God, I've grieved for you. And I've moved on from you. The father and the son, um, I didn't get their names. It probably was mentioned, I just forget. 
but um, I instantly was feeling them because there was a scene where the man he had sight on on his wife through his um, through the eye thing where you see I don't know anything about guns but anyway he was pointing the gun at his wife's face and unfortunately it just couldn't pull the trigger and I don't even know this man but my fucking heart was bleeding for him I don't even know if I'm ever gonna see him again but yes a strong confusing start but I'm I'm happy to give the other five episodes in this season a go for sure and we'll see how we go so if you want to be with me while I see how it goes and you haven't done so yet, feel free to hit the subscribe button so you're alerted when the next video drops. If you like this one, feel free to give it a thumbs up because it really does help in the YouTube algorithm. And down in the comments section, without giving away any spoilers, I want to know how you feel about me taking this journey. Am I going to be wasting my time on this 163 episode adventure? Or do I need to buckle up because I'm about to go on a ride? And if this is one of the first times you're seeing me, then feel free down in the comment section to say hi and introduce yourself. And I'll introduce myself back. And yet, like I said at the beginning of this episode, um, on Patreon, this episode and my reaction in its full entire length is up now. As well as hopefully all the other episodes of season one. But if I don't see you over there, I'll see you over here for the next video. So, until next time, stay safe out there.